Did you know this screen is called the Control Center? Stay tuned for more information. Let me give you a quick overview before we dive in. The Control Center provides a convenient method of turning certain connection-related features off and on, like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and airplane mode. There is also shortcuts to apps like the camera, calculator, and flashlight. Do you need to adjust the brightness of your screen or the volume on your phone? You can do that from here too. What is airplane mode? Airplane mode is one of the connection settings accessible from the control center. It's the first option you see right here. Airplane mode effectively shuts down all communication to and from your mobile device. This includes phone calls, apps, and the internet. Basically, you will not be able to do anything that requires a connection to the outside world. So why would anyone want to use airplane mode? If you need a simple way to turn off all sound, vibration, and notifications to your phone, you can put your device on airplane mode. If you use your mobile device as an alarm clock under your pillow at night, you'll want to cut down on electromagnetic frequencies emitted by the device, so you'll want to turn on airplane mode. Using airplane mode is an effective way to conserve battery power if you won't be using the device for long periods of time. Just keep in mind that nobody can get a hold of you while airplane mode is on. Looking back at the control center, the icon to the right of airplane mode is the cellular data button. This option is used to cut off the connection to your wireless carrier, like Verizon, AT&T, etc. You may want to do this if you have a limited data plan and you only want to use Wi-Fi, or if you're traveling abroad and need to avoid roaming or international data charges. Those can get very expensive. When cellular data is turned off, you may still use Wi-Fi to access the internet. Email, apps, things like that. If you need to make a call, you can still do that using apps like Google Voice, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, and things like that. Moving on down, you'll see the Wi-Fi button. This button does not give you the ability to choose a Wi-Fi network or enter a password for a hotspot. It only turns your Wi-Fi capability on or off. For example, if your whole family is streaming videos and music on your Wi-Fi, you may want to turn the Wi-Fi off on your phone and rely solely on your cellular network. The last option in the group of connection-related buttons is Bluetooth. If you connect your phone to a hands-free system, like how some people have it in their cars, or if you have a wireless speaker you own, or if you frequently use AirDrop to send pictures and videos to other people in your house, you want Bluetooth turned on. This button here is called the Orientation Lock. This option will prevent your phone from rotating between portrait and landscape mode. In other words, if you turn your phone sideways, your apps will not rotate with it. The Do Not Disturb option is similar to airplane mode because it disables all sounds, notifications, and vibration. However, it still allows your iPhone alarm clock app to wake you up. It also remains connected to the outside world so you will still receive calls, emails, and texts. You just won't be disturbed by them. The flashlight button is self-explanatory. This will allow you to turn the flashlight on and off. The iPhone uses the camera's flash feature as a flashlight, which is really handy. The next icon over is the timer button. This will take you directly to your iPhone's timer app as well as the stopwatch, alarm, and clock apps. Next up is the calculator button, followed by the camera app. This option here allows you to adjust the brightness on your screen. Some people, like myself, are sensitive to super bright cell phone screens, 
so I keep my setting pretty low. However, if you need someone to scan a barcode on your phone, like at Target, or at the grocery store, or somewhere else, then you'll need this setting to turn the brightness up. This setting here is the volume on your phone. You can turn it up or down as needed. Now that you are familiar with the basics of the control center, you should know that you do have the ability to customize the controls in some way. If you go into your settings, scroll down to the control center, tap on that, tap on customize controls, you can add or remove controls on this screen. Unfortunately, a lot of handy apps and options are missing from this list, but maybe sometime in the future this list will expand. Thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like my video. If you're interested in seeing more tech tutorials, please subscribe to my channel now.